This video is on the Ion Science Tiger PID. So I'm quickly going to go through how to bump test and check and calibrate the meter. So the on off button is this uh, button here with the arrow and a little line through it, through the, through the circle. So I push the button, you'll see the display will light up. And the display is going to go through some self checks and stuff like that. So it's firing the lamp, it shows a little lamp on there. Okay, And this meter hasn't been calibrated, so it's kind of bouncing around a little bit. It is somewhat normal to have some VOCs present in the background. Um, so there's two ways to zero this. So, so actually, what, maybe let's, uh, let's do... Uh, a quick check just to see how close we are. Uh, if I want to bump test this, I have um, 100 ppm isobutylene gas here, and I've got this fitting which has little holes. So the regulator, regulator is a 0.5 liter per minute regulator, so it's going to flow at 0.5 liters per minute, but the excess gas is going to flow out of these little ports so it doesn't overpower the pump. So if I turn this on, See this go up. You can see I'm pretty close. It's it's not bad, but I am going to calibrate, so I'll remove that. And you'll notice with PIDs generally they uh, you know they zero out pretty fast. So this is returned down to, to pretty much zero. Um, okay, so the first step for calibration, you can either Zero, like if I knew this room had no VOCs, I could use this as a considered clean and just zero to clean air in this room. Uh, or I can use this carbon filter that's included. So it's got two little caps on either end, so I'll pop this, the caps off, pop this onto the meter. You might even see this drop down as it's pulling through the carbon. Um, so it's actually pretty clean in here. But, okay, so if I go into... I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. There's a little uh, wrench shown here. Now, the meaning of these um, A, B button changes. So if I use A up and down here, right now this says zero, so my A button would be zero. These are data logging. They're one piece of paper and multiple pieces of papers for data logging. Um, so I'm going to look for the little wrench. So this the wrench is over here, so the B button is under the wrench, so I click that. Now I've got different things here. Uh, one of them, um, like I can control the backlight, I can control the sound, and this one is to do calibration. It looks like a ruler, basically. So I hit enter, this, this key, the on off button again. Hit that and it goes into calibration. Now there's a factory calibration or a calibration done by a person. So you wanna highlight that and you hit okay. Okay, now it's going to zero. So I've got the carbon filter. It's kind of out of the shot, but the carbon filter is on here. And it's giving me a 30 second countdown. So I click OK. And I'll see that 30 second countdown start to go down. And it's trying to get a good zero uh, reading through the filter. So that's, again, it's 30 seconds. So the filter is in place here. Okay, so when that's done, it, there's a little check mark that comes here and there's OK over here, so I click that. That's our zero. You can see now it's looking for 100 ppm uh, as a span. So the calibration consists of zeroing and spanning, like pretty much any other instrument. Um, so, again, I've got my 100 ppm my speed lean. I'm going to put that over the end here. I'm going to start the flow. So you can see I've got that over the end, fairly tight, but again, the gas is coming out the uh, those little ports so it doesn't pressurize the pump. Start the flow of gas, and I hit OK. So over that 30-second countdown, 
the meter is going to try to get a steady reading on 100 ppm isobutylene. Now I've got it set to alarm, I think the first alarm is at 50 and the second alarm is at 100, so uh, we may hear it go into alarm after this. Okay, so it's done, it's calibrated, it's got the little check mark. If I hit OK, okay, so it's, if I escape out, I can see that it's giving me 100. If I click out, or sorry, I take the gas off, you see how quickly it, it goes back down to zero. So there's something that I want to check in here. Now say this is calibrated with isobutylene, which is the standard gas to use. Now there is a feature to zero it. So um, if I was going around and I knew that it was super clean or there was no background VOCs, I could zero out the background. It's not a big deal to have a bit of VOCs kind of in the background, right? Um, if I look for the cylinder of gas icon, now say I calibrate this and I want to now, I know in a certain area there's, maybe there's styrene. So I don't know how well you can see this, but I can go to S here and I can go through, so there's three or 400 chemical response factors built into the Tiger. So this is styrene is the, uh, so if I knew if I was going into a room with just styrene, no other VOCs present, I could accept this and it says the response factor is 0.45. So my reading, uh, whatever the reading is, gets multiplied by 0.45, and it's measuring in styrene units. So uh, PPM is a styrene. So this is very powerful if there's one VOC present that you know is there and you can dial in and read it directly. Now, if there was three or four VOCs, they're all gonna have different response factors. This probably isn't that valuable. valuable. A lot of customers keep it as a response factor of one and just use it for you know general monitoring, that type of thing. Um, so anyway, if I was to accept that, then all the readings would be multiplied by 0.45. 100 ppm isobutylene from this cal gas would also read 45 because uh, that's a response factor. So anyway, thanks very much.